Hey friends, Peggy Hall back with you from the healthyamerican.org. As we close out the week, I want to share with you one approach to true freedom. This channel is all about freedom and truth and living in our truth and standing for freedom. And I'm telling you, I get all sorts of comments and text messages and emails, and there are plenty of people that don't agree with my perspective. And that is fine. That's okay. I welcome different perspectives. That is how we learn and grow. Of course, I don't care for people who are vulgar or do personal attacks and give me death threats and that kind of thing. But there is a different kind of insidious sort of challenge that can happen when we are trying to get approval and appreciation and validation and agreement from others. So I want to share with you something that's somewhat of an epiphany that I had pretty early in my life. And that is what helps me keep going in the face of these challenges and pushbacks from so many people. So I want to I want you to think about a person in your life, or maybe they're even kind of anonymous people. Maybe you're in a situation like I am, and you get emails from people that you don't really know, and they're attacking you for your, posi for your position. Or maybe these are even family members that you're having conflict with because you're trying to bring them the truth and information and things that you have now been uh, awake to, and you're aware and alert, and you want to alarm them. Or actually, you don't want to alarm them, but you want to make sure that they understand these things so that they are not alarmed by what's going on. So think about that. I'm going to share a personal story with you in just a moment and a perspective that has helped me find this expanded freedom in my life. So before we do that, I want to bring you a message from the sponsor of today's show. And here we are at threeharmfulfoods.com slash Peggy. I'd like to thank Dr. Amy Lee for being the sponsor of today's show. And she tells us that we live in the most advanced era of human history. There have never been more medical breakthroughs than there are right now, but why are millions of Americans unhealthy and overweight more than they've ever been. According to Dr. Amy Lee, who is a U.S. board certified physician, and she's an expert nutritionist, she says that one of the main reasons is these three harmful foods that are being passed off as health foods all over the country. And these foods can cause weight gain, they clog your digestive tract, they deplete your energy, and they wreck your skin. And basically, they're banned in other countries, yet they're allowed here in the United States. So I know that's shocking that the U.S. allows these, but now she is shining a light. Dr. Amy Lee is telling us which foods are wreaking havoc on the health of millions of Americans. And the great news is that it's easy to stop and reverse this damage by simply learning which foods to avoid and how to spot them. And by doing this, you can experience easier weight loss, smoother digestion, and more vibrant energy. She has a free tutorial for you here. It is at 3harmfulfoods.com slash Peggy. I'll have a link for you in the description box below. You can find out which are these basically three fake health foods. And again, it's the number three, harmfulfoods.com slash Peggy. After years of extensive uh, study, Dr. Amy Lee put together this revealing video for you. And it's totally free to the public so that you will never be duped by these so-called health foods again. I'll have a link for you in the description box below, three harmfulfoods.com slash Peggy. Friends, I want to tell you about a woman that I know. I made a couple of notes here. She is uh, quite negative and she always seems to sneak in these uh, chiding remarks, little things that are rude, jarring. In a subtle way, she's always trying to put me down. She's belittling my work. She compares me to others. And you know, it's true, these kinds of comments do sting, especially when it's in person. When I'm getting emails and comments and text messages from people that don't understand my perspective and they say, how could you think this way? You know, I sort of brush it off. That's part of what doing this kind of work brings. But when it's someone that I know and we're in a setting where there are other people around and she's making these comments, I admit it does sting. And there's a part of me that's like, why is she even doing this? Why would you even say these things? I'm embarrassed 
for her because because others hear this and they kind of look around a little uncomfortably. And it's like, why would you even do that? And I know why she does it. She does it because she is a hurting person and hurt people hurt people. And some people have this tendency to try to put down others in order to elevate themselves. But I want to share with you what I have found to be a way toward expanded freedom. And I want to tell you that it it does sting when you're surrounded by people that are negative, they're complaining. Uh, This person in particular has a very dour attitude. The sky is always falling. Nothing is good. There's always a rude comment, a negative comment, a put down. And this person herself, she is quite rough and pushy and abrasive. It's just not a type of personality that um, I care for, <laughs> you know, and we are, we are in some groups and things. So it's not like I can just cut her out of my life, but it's not like a close personal friend. Now I do have another friend and some of you may know her. She's Dr. Sam Bailey. I have done interviews with her before. She is a formal medical, former medical doctor from the, uh, country of New Zealand. And she had so much pushback because she was standing up speaking out about natural, healthy living. And she wasn't buying into the mainstream media merry-go-round narrative about health and disease and illness. And she went from being a very popular, well-loved personality. She was on the cover of magazines. She uh, She was the host of a national TV show about health she was very well regarded until she had an opinion and a perspective that was not well regarded by the mainstream. And she actually had the you know, government going after her medical license. And she since has stepped away from the mainstream medical merry-go-round. I'll leave a link for you for her descri- uh, in the description box if you would like to see some of her videos where she really will share some eye-opening perspectives about what really is going on with our health. But the reason I bring up Dr. Sam is from the opposite end of things where this woman that I know is always giving me these little digs and negativity and comparing me to other people and elevating other people about how great they are. And it's like, it's so awkward and embarrassing for her. By contrast, Dr. Sam has told me personally that she really admires what I do in my videos, that she uh, thinks that I have a gift for communication and that she likes the way that I explain things on screen, that I can take some complicated information and break it down and explain it in a way that people can understand and that I do it in a positive, um, enthusiastic manner. And she said some other things that were very nice and encouraging. And the reason why I'm sharing these two contrasting perspectives about the same person who is me. And I'm the same way with each of these individuals, yet one sees it as very threatening and has to try to tear me down with negativity and belittling remarks and comparisons. And then there's this other individual, Dr. Sam Bailey, who has complimented me so graciously, and I am grateful for that. But here is where I'm going with my epiphany. Why would I value this one person's opinion about me? Why would I allow that to bother me? And at the same time, I've got someone who I admire greatly, who has said some very kind and complimentary things about me. So why would I spend my time on the first person who is negative and hurtful and intentionally seeking to to tear me down? And that's where I'm going with my epiphany. Why would I value someone's opinion where I don't even think I don't even value their opinion that highly? So why would I allow that to to um, intimidate me or impugn me or tear me down? Why don't I spend uh, equal time or more time valuing someone else's opinion or better yet, why not value my own opinion of myself? And this is something that I learned at a very early age. I think it's because I was always a little bit outside of the mainstream. Let me know in a comment 
if you can relate to that. I would see things differently. I had a different perspective on the world. I never really watched television. I didn't drink. I didn't smoke. I never did drugs. I didn't like to party. So I wasn't really in like the mainstream way of living. I had plenty of friends that liked to do those things and I just didn't do it. I still don't do it to this day. So I was a little bit outside of the mainstream. I didn't like to go to concerts. I didn't listen to music. I played music. I played the violin. I played the piano. I played classical music. So I was not really aligned with what the mainstream was doing. And when I went off to the Peace Corps, when I went off to Morocco, when I was in the Peace Corps and I became an English teacher, I met people from all over the United States. And I was exposed to people from the East Coast, the South, um, the Midwest. And here I was from California having exposure to people with different viewpoints. And I met people that were very liberal. I pretty much was more conservative. So again, I just wasn't, you know, the Peace Corps attracted a lot of people that were very liberal minded. And it was fascinating for me to be exposed to different people, but I learned to really hold my ground and stand my ground because I was not really like other people. No one is like other people. We all are individual, but why do we spend so much time trying to get the admiration, the approval, the validation, and the appreciation of others? I believe it's because we may not have gotten that to the degree that we wanted it as children. And we may have lived our lives with a type of deficit feeling that no one out there really understood who we were. They didn't really hear what we had to say. They didn't really approve of what we, who we were and what we were doing. I think many people can relate to that. So I really learned to be sort of immune to other people's opinions because I didn't follow the mainstream way of doing things. This is kind of an interesting little aside, but when I was in high school, actually when I was in um, junior high, I actually, I was a competitive swimmer growing up and I wanted to join the girls swim team, but I had had all of those years of training and working out and there really, it wasn't a lot of competition for me. So I joined the boys swim team. I know, talk about equity and diversity and all of that and gender equality. Only I did it the other way and I didn't change my gender. I was a, a female, right? Like a 13 year old competing on the boys swim team because that gave me better competition. I actually even joined the boys water polo team because there wasn't a girls water polo team. I was the only girl on the girl on the boys swim team. And I was the only girl on the boys water polo team who knew that I was a pioneer. And I share this story just as a way to share with you that I didn't follow traditional paths. And because of that, I had to just become immune to the comments and criticism of other people. And I suppose I came across as more self-assured and confident because I just didn't let those things bother me. And I really call that a uh, a blessing in my life. And it's something that I've needed to continue to develop because truthfully, it does sting. It stings when there are those that will throw the slings and arrows. But the difference is that I don't put a lot of value into it. In fact, what I do is I try to put myself in the place of those that are doing the criticism, the negativity, the uh, you know pushiness, the abrasiveness. And I'm thinking, wow, at least that's not me. How sad to live with that kind of outlook on life where everything is negative and all you're trying to do is harm someone else to elevate yourself. So the solution for me, one solution that I shared with you is I will weigh someone's opinion of myself of a person that I actually admire and value. Why would I put that much weight into negativity from people that I don't really even value um, what they have to say that much. But when I look at someone that I value, then it's better for me to focus on that. But more importantly, and I, I've got two things to share with you, stay till the end because it's the, the ultimate. But what I seek to do is value my own opinion. So why would I care about what other people think about me more than what I think about myself? So what I strive to do, and I'm certainly not perfect, 
I have my own faults and flaws and frailties, and there are plenty of areas where I need to grow. But what I strive to do is to live my life according to my values, my principles, things that are important to me. Even when I come on here to do these videos, there probably are plenty of videos that I would like to take down. Maybe not plenty, but there probably are some videos where I may have crossed the line. I may have gone into a rant. I might have uh, exhibited righteous anger. I may have criticized others. I may have ridiculed others. And, you know, I, I need to think about that. Is that the kind of, uh, image that I want to project? Is that really, does that really align with my values and principles? So it takes, it's good to take some time and to think about what are those values? Values are things that are important to you in life. My number one value is truth. I love to expose deception. I love to help people not get hoodwinked and bamboozled and duped by the deceivers, by the oppressors, by the tyrants. That is extremely important to me is to live in truth. So I value honesty. I value forthrightness, but I also value compassion. And I value people that can be tactful. So if somebody says, hey, do you like my new haircut? I'm not going to say, uh, what were you thinking? It's horrible. I hope you're going to grow it out. I would say something like, wow, it looks like quite a change. Or um, how do you feel with your new style? I would seek to be more tactful. That's just me. And I do have a little bit of the people pleasing streak in me. And I think that's just part of my God-given nature that I like to bring people together. And I like to build the bridges. I like to help people see another point of view. And at the base of it, I suppose that I do like to get the accolades and the approval and the appreciation, but here's where I'm going with this. No one, not your spouse, not your best friend, not your parents, not your children, not your siblings, I believe no one can truly give you the validation, the appreciation, the approval, and the acceptance at the level that you need. No one can do it better than you because you're the one that knows what you need. So when you've done a job well done, or you have contributed something, or you have stuck you know, stuck it out and you've gone through the hard times, that is where you can acknowledge that at the level that you need. Now, it may go, I I don't know if it goes without saying, so I'm going to say it. I seek God's approval. His approval is the most important to me. And again, that goes back to my values and my principles. So when I'm living my life and I'm doing my videos and I'm responding to some of the comments that are very hurtful and targeted, I pray about it. And I ask God to direct me and guide me with his wisdom, his compassion, his love, his understanding so that I can honor him and his ways in what I do. So honoring God is absolutely number one. And he gave me, he blessed me and he blessed you with certain gifts and talents that God wants you to share. And so that's what I seek to do. So I want to align that with my values of truth, of freedom, of compassion. I want to educate and encourage and empower and, uh, inspire people to also share their gifts as intended. So A is how to expand your sense of freedom and not worry so much about what other people think about you. What do you think about yourself? Are you honoring God with your gifts that he has blessed you with? At the end of the day, if someone's going to take a snapshot of what you said and what you're doing, is this something that would bring God glory? Is this something that you could live with in your life and say, you know, that's something that aligns with my values? Or are you only trying to impress others and get their approval and validation and appreciation and acknowledgement? Friends, I don't think we can ever get that to the level that we seek it from other people. I find that a huge relief and it's truly freeing for me. As far as the person that I, uh, this woman that I told you about that is throwing the slings and arrows and trying to belittle me, I just try to send out love 
and compassion. And I have a simple prayer, which is help her grow, Lord, help her grow. And that kind of keeps my own thoughts of feeling the stings and the frustration and the indignation. It keeps that at bay. It's a simple prayer. It sends out the love and the acknowledgement. And I will have to share with you in another video that I've had experiences where these people actually have grown, where they have let some of that negativity fall by the wayside. And maybe it's because I don't respond to it. Uh, you know, that might be it, that if I'm responding to it, they're, they're getting uh, feedback that is bothering me. And then it kind of ups the ante. The bottom line is this, friends, what I've learned in my life, and this truth has also helped me expand my freedom. Most people don't really think about you that much. So elevating their opinion of you puts the power, gives the power to them instead of keeping the power with you. The truth of the matter is people are not really thinking about you that much. They're thinking about themselves. So that should be freeing in and of itself. Let me know if this is an area where you have had some challenges and share with me your tips to not allow other people's opinions or comments or perspectives to drag you down. I have another expression, which is kick harder and swim faster. Don't let them pull you under. You're going to kick and move in the direction, in a positive direction, guided by uh, the good Lord above who has blessed you with gifts that you can share and have a positive impact in the lives of others. Thank you for being on board, everybody. I really appreciate you. I'll have a link to my Substack below. That is a free type of newsletter where I do a summary of a lot of the videos. So you can read that, you can share it. And uh, ideally you are going to be encouraged and blessed by it. See you soon.